Oh. Hey, Ira. Who we got? It's Matt Pax. Uh, yeah. Hello, gents. Yeah. Hello, Ira. What's going on? Oh, boy. Not much. So we were just talking about the European bonds and yeah. the fact that the bonds are going straight up and the gold's going with it. Yeah, after yesterday, but that, that you know, gold actually I thought performed as I wrote on Sunday night pretty much as expected. They should have done what they've done because, but again, they're not tied to tariffs except for brief periods when people are rushing into the uh, equity markets uh, really know it, but Yeah, uh, but so I mean, a real, and, and the fact that the gold silver, which I've read more articles about people trying to put that out there, just uh, uh, you know, every, a lot of people promoting the trade, but it just it just won't go. I think it's more, t you know, Judd. I saw the work overnight, so that uh, copper, silver, copper, which has gained uh, quite a bit in the last month, but. Still, that silver is really tied to that copper, yeah. you know, in anticipation of industrial activity. Yeah, and it's gold copper too. It's just breaking out the new highs here, big time. Yeah, yeah, gold, gold is, uh, gold has definitely found uh, some interesting. Uh, uh, some traction here, uh, and you know what? And it proved it. It held the. It was interesting that the, my CME uh, routing system is down last night when gold was making its lows. I'm talking about last night. Uh, when it finally reopened, the gold was already up to 93 or 94. So I missed that whole breakdown, but that's, it really didn't matter. But it's the gold currencies, even with the dollar uh, resuming, although now we're just you know fluctuating and, and again, pivoting around the 200-day moving averages. So nothing out of the ordinary there. I think the emerging markets have really performed very nicely after the uh, <clears throat> um, emerging market currencies anyway, uh, after the uh, G20 meeting, so. So Ira, so, hang on to that thought for one second. I just put up the yeah. gold copper on a monthly. Mm -hmm. Trying uh, 50, 53.30, above 53.30. You know, it's got two breakaway mm -hmm. gaps already, but that's a cloud breakout on the monthly that'll target 60.66. Well, that's uh, oh, it's a big move. Here, let me put yes, up. That's a very significant move. Let me put up the silver copper and see if that what that looks like. I mean, this thing broke down in what? In uh, it had a total ORL breakdown in September 2016 on the monthly. And the most that thing, maybe 60, 70, maybe, if it gets back up to the 200 month average. Yeah. Okay, so we want to go to emerging markets or emerging market currencies. You could look at them. I mean, I, since this meeting, of course, you know, the Turkish lira uh, rally, we don't watch, we don't trade that, but the Brazilian real is strong. The ruble is really holding up well. Um, uh, I, I am, I'm looking at buying, in fact, I am, I'm involved in buying the beans right now. I bought some yesterday on the break and I'm buying some here. And if it fails, my risk is very low here. So, you know, it's, but I'm, interestingly is that the grain stocks, you know, Bungie, you know, jumped over 57 this morning, ADM, you know, those are holding up. So, um, it's almost like. They trade like the gold stocks for many months, you know, relative to the gold because they were languishing, and then they then they started to lead. But we'll see, we'll see what happens here. Uh, I'm getting questions um, about Lagarde. This is preposterous. Oh, I was hoping you'd bring that. Guys have seen that story. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what. This has to be floated by the French. First of all, she's, it's not going to take because she's French. I don't care whether she has an international presence or not. Um, they're doing everything that they can to prevent Ziegman. And, and it, from everything that I, re, that I suspect, 
they're really afraid that Merkel's going to push for Wiedemann because they finally waking up that the Germans need a German. Um, so they keep throwing names out. Lagarde. Um, you know, last week it was uh, um, uh, Olivier Blanchard. Uh, they'll, they'll keep throwing these names out in the hope of getting some traction. I'm going to tell you, it, this would be a debacle for Lagarde to run the ECB. A debacle. An absolute debacle. She, she really has not managed the IMF well as when they got involved in the Greek bailout. And a lot of the other countries who are members of the IMF were very unhappy with that. She has no central banking experience. Um, uh, I really, I, she's such a lightweight. This would just be, have to be for a compromise because uh, she has a, uh, excuse me, but she has the right uh, gender parts and they're looking for a woman. So <laughs> with, with her, hey, I mean, don't minimize that. They've talked about how they're looking for women to be in these important roles. Uh, and they think with her international prestige, but the only one she has prestige for is with uh, herself and those who she's bailed out and certain journalists who want to have access to her because they, they parade her. I remember they used to parade Merkel in the same capacity. Why do you figure... Uh, so I, I, yeah, Sorry, I was just going to ask you about that. I saw that come across this morning, and I didn't get much of a chance uh, to delve into it. Why do you figure, do you think it's because, besides the fact that she's a woman and they're looking for a, a, a woman with an international presence, do you think mm -hmm. that it's got something to, something more to do with the part of Europe she's from? You know, that, that maybe oh. they're... Wait, wait a minute. She was, you know, this, I never, I was opposed to her, not that that means anything, except that I, I will, I've got multiple blogs. You guys can scroll back and read them when she was appointed to the IMF, which was a gigantic mistake. You know, again, let's go back to the whole predicament with Dominic Strauss-Kahn, who was supposed to be the head of the IMF at the time. And then he got uh, in trouble for failing to keep his uh, gender specific uh, things in his pants. So uh, uh, it's just, it's, there's a lot of things there, and she's way too political. She was previously, before that, besides being a, an asshole attorney at Baker and McKenzie in Chicago, um, she was finance minister in France. That's way too political a position. You know, this would be an absolute disaster, an absolute disaster. How many people are in this room? 44. Okay. I mean, I, I have some, let's see if I find that. Yeah, I, mean, I hope I didn't get rid of it. Uh, 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 hold on. Let's see. I have an article that I pulled up that I was going to blog about. That, uh, let me read. Don't tell me I got rid of it. I'm going to be upset. Uh, hold on. I can go back and get it in a minute, but let me see if I can find it. Hold on just a second. Yeah, and the, and the real could actually put in an, o, uh, an ORL week, which is a strengthening real. Now that you bring that up, I mean, it's got uh, a I'm week. Sorry? Yeah. The, weekly, the weekly real is trying to put in an OR week. Okay. Strengthening real. The ruble's right on its 200 week. The uh, the Turkish lira is trying to close below its its 50 week moving average, which is stronger lira. <clears throat> hmm. well, hold on one second. Uh, damn it! Hold on. I really had this really good piece I've been sitting on, and of course. Yeah, somebody just sent me a piece just now. Ugh, Lagarde. <laughs> this, this is not not good. Hold on one second. Another piece on Lagarde. Uh, I'll tell you what. You want to see Trump go nuts? Get her in. Yeah, that'll drive him ballistic. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. You want to see him talk the dollar down? Let's see. 
Let's see. Christine Lagarde is set to swap the helm. I just got this from uh, becoming the first woman. Be, here's the becoming the first woman to run Euro Euro, Euro area monetary policy. Just so Lagarde was nominated. Oh, she's been officially nominated. Who nominated? Let's see. Hold on. Mm. They're putting her forward. I I can't believe this. This is okay. You know what? They think that they have it done. I want to see what the Germans come up here with. <laughs> oh my God! They're insane. They're, they, this group is truly insane. Uh, I'm sorry. They they have reached a new low in life. There's just no way. This was a compromise, I guess, crafted. You know, I guess Macron was able to get it done, but whoa, I, I think this is disastrous. Disastrous. Because, listen, what she did again with, and, 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 and this is not an emotional response on my part, what she did with the Greeks was over the edge, and I just don't understand how the Germans would be able to absorb this, especially, what, what are you going to do now? Let me, because if they put her forward, they think that because she was French Prime Minister, Minister and, her, and her influence because of her role at the IMF, that she'll be able to craft uh, uh, a situation where, as head of the ECB, she'll be able to get all the countries of the EU to craft a harmonized fiscal policy. Well, if she can pull that off, God bless her. But paint me extremely skeptical because the Germans haven't given in to anybody, nor have the Dutch, nor the Finns. Um, we can go on. There are other uh, nations. I, I just can't believe this is going to happen. I, I just can't. Um, I think I think it would be a, a mistake of gargantuan proportions. But that's, and, and again, that's not emotional. This is just the way it is. And of course, how are they selling it? The first woman. Okay. First woman. What What, what can I tell you? They, so uh, you thought I was making a joke when I talked about this, the uh, gender specificity. I'm not. There, you know, there might be other women, but she's the wrong one. She's the wrong one. I know she has international stature, but that's probably the worst of it. Because um, the international stature she has, of course, it emanates from the IMF, which I'm never, I've never been a fan of the IMF. I think that uh, they've done many things wrong and ill-advised, but what they did with the bailout of Greece was reprehensible. So, um, so we'll, we'll go from there. But I'm, I'm getting. Uh, let me find that article because it'll help. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I can't tell the joke I want to tell. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to watch myself. Well, I can. Uh, I'm not. I can turn off the recording. <laughs> And no, 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 no. Better I should hold hold my tongue. It's I'm a, I'm a, I'm a mature man now. Oh, bullshit! You don't want to devolve into <laughs> debauchery. <laughs> it's not debaucherous, but I have a, an unseemly joke about this. Um, but I, I, you know what? They may nominate her, but I just have to see the way this takes place. Um, hold on. Yeah, I just lightened up in some uh, gold up here, guys. Yeah, I, I did too. I may have to buy a basket. It's it's just yeah, it's it's just up into this area on momentum that just makes sense to take a little off. Yeah, nobody wa nobody wanted to buy it yesterday when it was on sale. <clears throat> no, 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 no. You couldn't find a bull yesterday. Well, that, that, that's typical, though. That That's, you know, behavioral yeah. finance yeah. 101. Yeah, and, and it's certainly the impact of, you know, yesterday there wasn't a financial network that wasn't spinning the, the idea that, oh, it's over. Okay. All right, I found this article. Now, this is from the L.A. Times, and I'm going to read you a little bit, if you'll bear with me, of uh, September 1st, 1992, and it's under Voices. We are now... In, Six speak out on unifying Europe. France's Maastricht Treaty referendum may be the last chance for a common continental future. Now, I know I've talked, you know, we've talked about the vote and the way it turned out. So it cites six people, three three in favor of, of 
passing the Maastricht Treaty in, a, in the French referendum. This is all about our French and three opposed. So the three for, for passage, one of them, of course, is uh, Valérie Gassard de Stang, who had been uh, president of France uh, in the 70s and the prime minister before that in the 60s, uh, famous uh, for the, the uh, de Stang bonds that were actually gold backed, and a lot of people made a lot of money of them, in them in the, who bought them because they had a gold backing to them. So when gold took off in the late 70s, they were very smart. But, uh, okay. So I'm reading from uh, Elizabeth Wigou, who is, at the time, she was 46, civil servant, minister for European affairs. This is in 1992. And here's what it says. Okay, so I'm, just, I'm giving you a, a, a sense of what went on. And remember, this referendum in France, barely passed. And this was with a lot of powerful people pushing for it. So uh, so she's a socialist. And most socialists were opposed to the Maastricht Treaty, which was the creation of the ECB and everything that came with it in 1992. Oh, shit. My power just went out. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm quoting from the LA Times article. Left-wing critics of Maastricht say that Europe that the treaty imagines is based on a classically liberal economic model. That's why the socialists were opposed to it, because it was creating a market, a vast market economy that they would lose control of, and they were worried about that. But for Grigo and other young supporters in the titularly left Socialist Party, Maastricht represents a progressive Europe that will ensure that France participates in the economic benefits of a pan-European economy. So they like the concept of being able to be in a bigger economy, some of them. Then it goes on to say, and this is an important takeaway for me, under the Europe, under the Europe envisioned in the Maastricht Treaty, for example, interest rates would be determined by a central European bank. And this is when there were just 12. The 12 nations would have a common currency. France and other European countries would no longer be at the mercy of the dominant German Bundesbank. Okay, now, now these aren't just people on the street. These are significant players in... Uh, in the French government. So I'm, I just want to give you the flavor of what the mindset has been. Um, there is another uh, uh, high level, uh, uh, his name is uh, Michel Noir. He's the mayor of Lyon and a member of the National Assembly, for, former Minister of Foreign Trade. And his response is, it, it, and he's in favor of passage. And he says, to, uh, Noir says, the Maastricht Treaty is a necessity for both economic and political reasons. He sees the French hesitation to accept the treaty as a form of future shock, a fear of the unknown. But he says, its defeat in this month's referendum would be devastating for the future of Europe. Worst of all, he fears that it would cause powerful Germany to break with the ideal of European integra integration. The effect of a no on Germany would be enormous. The German question exists for sure. There is always a temptation in Germany to go its own way and create an independent superpower. We need to drown Germany with a yes vote. So I'm, I'm just, I'm giving you the flavor. And so when these people throw out this stuff, this is somebody calling up their favorite journalist and saying, here's what's being done. Here's who we propose. And, and it runs with the story. That's how we get these headlines. Because, you know what? Who can we drop this on? And, and I'm a believer that the leak source, the most prominent leak source in Europe, especially for the ECB, is Reuters. Somebody leaks to Reuters because Reuters has some of the best articles and seem to be and bear out where a lot of other articles don't. But so I always like to pay attention to Reuters. Um, I haven't seen anything from Reuters yet on this. I got there's a Bloomberg article again, but I, I'm just giving you a sense of of, uh, of how this all you know really turns out. And uh, I, I, so again, they're putting they're running forth, and this is out of the European meeting that are going on right now. So they're running forth with regard. It's a trial balloon. Let's see what Germany has to say. 
But maybe that's why the Italian uh, yields have been dropping so precipitously. I know others will say, oh, it's because the Italians have backed off. The Italians have backed off nothing. Uh, again, that nonsense. But if you got Lagarde in, uh, well, hold on, I got to reboot because my power went out. Uh, I had oh, that just had a nice what? thunderstorm and went through. Yeah, I had that same thing. Oh, my oh. power went out in my house too. I've got to reboot my whole system. Yeah, yeah I'm, just I'm, doing it right I'm looking at Bitcoin too, you guys. Is that, you know, the same thing. It's been the same trade as gold. Boom. Yeah, people are looking for some alternative. It, it is amazing. And a lot of people are getting burned here because they keep trying to put that gold silver cross on, you know. And we looked at that the other day, I think on Thursday. I know we did. Yeah. We saw it up at around 93. And Judd, you gave us some historical perspective. I think we're going back to 81 on that. If you go, if you go to, you know, to the pitch, uh, use the pitch charts, uh, it'll take you back to 81. I think the high on the, uh, or 1980, the high on the spread was, uh, not 1980, 81, it was 96 or something. But uh, so we're, we're getting back to those levels. And when you really look across the board and the way different asset classes are, are behaving, it, it, it's very shocking, very shocking. But yeah. so it goes. And, and I don't think that spread's got a chance of breaking out. No, it, I mean, it really, you know, and I've been, I've lost a lot of money with it because in the whole, when it, when it was dabbling around the 200-day moving average about three three months ago, I said, oh, you know, it looks like it's ready to go. In fact, I think we, we actually closed above there for a little bit, but it never, it never got any traction. Couldn't, could not get any traction. Yeah, and this, yeah, and I don't, and I don't see it because it's got, you know, an industrial component to it, and it's got people don't want it. Right. No, that's right. The industrial component, because they use it also as a hedge. Yeah, you know, hey, they see copper, and and copper is a much more, you know, is a, I would say, is a, you don't buy copper as a uh, as, as a hedge against anything. You buy it if you if you need the copper. If you're uh, building electronic vehicles, you need the copper. Yeah, but not, you know, you're not buying it as as a currency hedge. You're not buying it as a um, hedge against central banks uh, absolutely are losing away. Because if you did, you'd be better off buying silver because of course silver does have a precious metal component. But I, I'm, I, when I look at the silver and I tell this to people, I think the silver bull, if there is a bull, will be made in China. Because if China is looking to harden the yuan in order to make it uh, 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 investable on a, and, and to uh, create it so it has a uh, exchange mechanism to it. China needs to harden its currency, and they can do it in, in a bimetal way. I mean, I'm so far ahead of myself on this, I'll be the first to say it, but China has a very big history with silver. So uh, that, that has to be the, um, the ignition point. No, I don't think anybody else can do it just from the way it's traded. It would take China actually saying that they were starting to buy silver, and then you'd see silver do a major catch up. But right now, it, it's it's really stuck. Yeah, I mean, look at, if you look at a quarterly chart, it hasn't done anything in 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 forever. I mean, they had the one right. rally in uh, 2016 that faded, and it hasn't been anywhere since. I mean, you need even on a quarterly, the quarterly momentum comes in at. You're going to need over seventeen dollars at this point, or sixteen seventy, to think it can right. start to rally. Yeah, it's it's you know it's, it, I, I'm looking at a weekly chart, a, a weekly continuation, and really it, it's you know it's sideways for for quite a while. Where gold has had movement, silver has had none, and uh, and there are a lot of people trying to be bullish silver, very little reward. Oh yeah, the 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 the, the the twit heads are all about uh, silver's going back to 50, you know, 2011. Yeah. I mean, great. Yeah. I mean, I, I, Rob and I caught part of that break, but, you know, yeah. I, only, <laughs> I didn't know it was going to go to zero again. Yeah. Well, you know I mean? Here's, yeah, a, here's you, a double you, top, you guys, in the silver, on an annual silver. 
Yeah, you can get on a monthly. You see it. Yeah, there it is. And it was somewhere in here when Ira and I knew we were totally screwed with our silver <laughs> purse. <laughs> because yeah. because the, we, we called up a smelter and they told us it was like six to nine months to yeah, get a smelt to yep. Yeah, it was over. What year is that, Judd? That was 1980. 1980. Yes, yes, yes. I took delivery of uh, three contracts of silver coins. That's 15 bags, $1,000 bags. I carried them out of Continental Bank. I put them in my car, and my car, uh, my back went down and my front went up. I drove down the sales street with my tailpipe dragging. <laughs> you see what whammo or not? <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it's true. I, I, I dropped my box in. I dropped my bag inside one of those metal boxes in the bank, and, and it dented it. We had to throw the box away. <laughs> Wouldn't fit back in the hole. True story. True story. The car, <laughs> the, the, the sparks were flying out of the tailpipe as I was driving down the sale street. <laughs> and, and in those days, Matt. We just pulled right up to the loading ramp, and they just wheeled it out. There was no security, no nothing. None. None. <laughs> none. none. Fifteen bags, and, it, and I had them all full <laughs> for different people. I know, I know everybody who bought a couple, because, you know, I, we bought them really right, and they said, I said, here, you know what, I'll sell them. I'll sell them to you. I'm taking X amount of profit, and you guys are going to have them. And they, everybody took them. But I had oh, no problem getting rid of them. I had a problem delivering them, but I had no problem. <laughs> I love that. I, 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 I'm, pit, I'm trying to picture the low rider driving down <laughs> South Street with the. Oh, well, he had a Jeep Wagoneer that Lenny gave him as a bonus. No, no, that, I, that's not the car I had it in, though. I had it. I had used somebody else's car because I the Jeep was such a. I, I got the Jeep after that. I didn't have it yet, but I got uh, it after. I probably, I probably needed it. My Volkswagen. Oh, I was driving a Volkswagen Beetle, so that that certainly couldn't handle it. So we knew that. That's a great story. That is really a great story. True, true story. True story. Can't you can't make some of this? You can't make it up. I, I mean, when I if I ever really sit down and write a book, it, nobody will believe it anyway. Yeah, I mean the gold, the silver was in the '30s when we tried to we called we started calling around to smelters to see if we could get it. The coins uh, put in the uh, silver bars. Right. That's that's right. You know, we wanted to smelt that. We needed a, a, a qualified smelter because you needed Handy or Harmon or Engelhart. You couldn't just do only five. The, the five who sat at the fixing in London. Uh, otherwise, no. But people are, you know, it's not to say silver won't take off, but you have to be very patient with it because it's had every reason to rally here. So that's why I say any type of uh, silver rally has to be made in China. Has to be. And they, again, have a history of bimetallism because if you go back to the um, Boxer Rebellion and um, the Opium Wars, it was, it was all about silver. It, and with the Brits trying to break the Bank of Japan, well, you know, the, the Chinese financial system by uh, depreciating uh, Silver. So, again, very interesting things. But uh, again, Lagarde, you know, uh, and I'm looking, the, the Italian bond rally has been, you know, John, put the future up so we can see. I mean, it's, oh, it's it, been. It's huge. And, and, I, and, yeah. I, and, I, and I'm looking for it to go to, uh, on the monthly, I'm looking for it to go back up and test this 138 and a quarter level. Well, but let, let me, in, in a yield, let, let me explain. I'm not going to stay on much longer, but let me, in a yield per play, okay, now put your hats on here. The Italian right now tenure is about 183. So it's now 15 basis points below the U.S. tenure yield. Think about that. Italy, which we hear about all these problems, and what are they quibbling about? The, the Italian uh, debt to GDP ratio is still 132%, 133%, which is way over the Maastricht limit, which says 60%. So let's get rid of that. And we know that the Italians are not caving into what Brussels wants anyway. So what's going on here? To me, it's just a chase 
for yield. And, I, you know, I keep talking about this, but if you take uh, German bonds, Danish bonds, uh, Dutch bonds, Austria bonds, Finland, you know, these are all, even the, even the French is six, negative on the 10 year, negative six basis points, negative for French. But it, it, it's preposterous, but so be it. The market is there because of what the banks are doing, of course. So what I think is truly going on is that they're just bundling these bonds. So you buy, you know, the capital keys, you can find them at the ECB. They tell you how much they have to own of each sovereign bond in their quantitative easing program. And they have to stick to that capital key. And it's based on each country's percentage of GDP uh, relative to the whole EU GDP. So I think Germany is like 17% or 18%. And that's how much of German debt they have to buy the 100% that they, uh, you know, it's 18 out of 18% of 100 because that's the size. And that's what the capital key requires. But with these negative yields, and of course, the lack of German bonds, because don't forget, the Germans are running budget surpluses. So they're not, they're, they're not issuing new bonds. So whatever you buy, you buy. They, you know, as some come due, they'll reissue new ones. But uh, they're not really issuing new bonds whatsoever. So you're seeing this discrepancy. And so what I, I believe is going on, because it's the same thing the ECB is doing, by buying some Italian, by buying some uh, uh, Spanish, by buying some Belgium, they put together a synthetic euro bond. See, I know it's not easy to wrap your head around, but that's what they're doing because that's what the ECB has done. So if you do it by the capital keys, you create your own bond, and therefore you come out with a positive yield. So if I'm forced to buy European debt, uh, and, and it has to be sovereign debt because maybe I'm an insurance company, a pension fund, whatever, and I have my, uh, my statutory uh, decrees that I have to adhere to, they're, that's what they're doing. So they're basically created, in my mind, the same thing that subprime debt was in the United States. Because don't forget, subprime debt really was uh, an amalgamation of, um, of base, well, what the rating agency said was 85% AAA and 15% uh, far less. And, but it was the 15% that kept growing and growing and with leverage blew the whole system up. So I, I believe that this is what they're doing in Europe. In order to smooth out and get some type of positive yield, they're, they're just aggregating these different things. So it's putting a lot of upward pressure because you have to, if that's what you're doing, you, now you have to buy Italian debt where people, you know, uh, in the famous words of somebody about Russian debt, you know, I'd rather eat toxic waste. Evidently a toxic waste is starting to taste pretty good. Uh, um, so these are the things that are taking place in the world as, as we're watching. And that's putting a lot of upward pressure on Italy. Because remember, uh, Bill Gross, uh, Gunlash, they all said that the best sale in the world was, was if not German bonds, Italian bonds. Well, right. not doing so well if you look at a chart. The, uh, Ira, I was just looking at the oats. And uh, they Did just, the, the last two days... They're over their rollover yeah. gap, so that projects another 200 points higher. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and who thought the bonds could go to – the crazy thing is Swiss 10-year bonds are negative 57, and the Germans are negative 37. So there's 20 basis points differential between them. But that's, again, to me, a reflection of, of the lack of, of supply of, uh, of bonds. There's just no getting around it. That, that's the world we live in. Ira, having said that, what, uh, what's your sense of the supply of Swiss tenure? Well, there's no shortage of them. I guarantee you that because we know the, <laughs> print the, them up. the Swiss will go to, yep, the Swiss will print them up. You know what? And it's what they've been doing. We haven't heard much. I, I haven't, I have to look at the, uh, the I just newest figures at, coming. Ira, I just looked at a quarterly ten, uh, Swiss tenure. I haven't looked at this in ages. Yeah, no RH yeah. quarter last quarter, and you have a breakout this quarter. Yeah, yeah. I, um, let me get on an SCU. Uh, there it is. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, 
again, it's the search for yield. And who buys this? I, you know, I go back to Rich Dennis's famous solar fuel theory. You only buy it in the hope that you can sell it to somebody. You know, if you bought the bunds at 173, you hope to sell them at 173.10. Well, for some there, it's even better because where are we at now? We're at 173.45. So we're, we're on the highs. And, and it, it keeps climbing because I can't tell you what it's because, but I'll tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> but well, if, Ira, Ira, don't you want to buy some Austrian 100-year bonds? Yes, yes, I because I, you know what? I don't want to live another hundred years. <laughs> Give me another twenty, I'll be happy. Thank you very much. Uh, no, I, it's preposterous to me. And if Lagarde is the choice, the politicization of the um, of the ECB, not that it's not politicized now. Uh, will become astronomical because, first of all, regarding the crone are attached at the hip anyway. And don't don't think anything else but that they come from the same political background, the same mindset. He's, of course, much younger, but that shouldn't stop Lagarde because she would appreciate a much younger man until her uh, Gwyneth Paltrow comes in upon her retirement. Um, if you don't get that joke, I apologize. Uh, I was not muted out. <laughs> I left. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 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 But if others can use it, I can use it. I can use that frame of reference. Um, so I, I'm, I, this I'm, is, I'm looking at our five year, Ira. We start getting, that thing starts getting over 118.10 on the quarterly. You're going to get a huge yeah. break out in that. Yeah. yeah it's, it's within five ticks. Well, again, and when they when they try to deny that it's true, and it's the one one of the things that Trump has right when he went after uh, uh, Powell via Draghi, it's they just keep pushing it. And the more that they talk, they don't even have to do, have to actually um, uh, they don't have to actually buy anything. They just jawbone it. They're not really changing anything. They're just jawboning the action. And and I'm telling you, if this is Lagarde running the ECB, I, I, I don't know. To me, all hell will break loose yeah, eventually because she's just a bad choice. You need somebody with response who's a responsible banker at the helm. Hell, I'd rather see Jamie Dimon. Hell, God. You know what? I, I, who nominated her? Hey. Well, well, hold on. Let's let me go. Let me go get the full story. Here, up. Joe just said that we all know Macron appreciates an older woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, here I'm looking at the two years on the quarterly too. You got a gap from two thousand July two thousand seventeen. The the two years look like they want to go up there and fill that gap too, or at least go trade at it. Let's see. Let me go back and get that article. Now, where did I get all this? Um, <coughs> okay, Lagarde, this is, it's a Bloomberg article written by Simon Kennedy. Christine Lagarde is set to swap the helm of the IMF for that of the European Union, becoming the first woman to run Euro area monetary policy just as the Black's economy looks in need of fresh stimulus. Lagarde is nominated to lead Mario, who I, I I guess she's been nominated. I I haven't seen an official story. I guess until Zero Hedge reports that it's not true anyway. Uh, <laughs> moving from Washington to Frankfurt, the guy will be tasked with driving monitor. <laughs> when I see Reuters with the story, I will give it more credibility. Let's see, inflation is running. I saw it on. Uh, I saw Bloomberg with it this morning. Yeah, Bloomberg has it, but I I do not believe it. She also plays running. Mm -hmm. My, yeah, my, first, that, my first yeah. guess would be a bunch of the, the French, but, you know. Well, that, that yeah, was my French don't, They don't have enough power. They like to believe they do. They don't. And Macron is really on his heels. That's why I'm very skeptical. But there, somebody tried to get out front with this so that there would have to be a denial. Has to. This, this is a planted story. Let's see. Let me see if there's a source. Uh, she was a bit of nothing for uh, only one gonna 
Only one economist surveyed last month predicted she would get the job, with Biden seen as the most likely winner. France has now twice secured the presidency of the two-decade-old ECB. Now, remember what I read to you from the, from the uh, L.A. Times in 1992. Draghi and Italian anymore. See, I thought what the compromise would be was that they might move Draghi into the EC presidency and put Viedman at the bank. That's what I thought was the compromise that they would try to work out. She's very political. She's very wise. And I would assume that she has the best economist that can help her. With, <laughs> I, I don't even know what that means. Alicia Levine, chief of strategist at BNY Mellon said, eh, it's a little puzzling because she's not known as John just put, put up a quote here. He said the European Council nominator nominated her, and that was reported on 4X Factory. Okay, but she hasn't been accepted. They can, they can be not. She can be nominated. Let's see. Still, all right. I, I have to see the way this plays out. I'm. Paint, paint me very skeptical that this is going to take place. Lagarde was educated in France and the U.S., working as an intern in the U.S. Congress for a time. Well, that should give anybody credibility. And graduating from the University of Paris, she joined the Paris office of Chicago-based law firm Baker and McKenzie. She focused on employment laws and mergers and everything. Yeah, unless, unless, it's gonna, a, unless it's a plant, Ira, to see what the reaction of the Germans would be. It's, there's no, you know what? That's what I believe this is. That's what I believe. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I, if this goes, if this goes forward to fruition, oh boy, I, I, I'm telling you, it's not going to be good. Maybe that's why gold rallied early today. The Germans get what they deserve. And the Bitcoin blast. Well, I don't know about that. Huh? Yeah, Bitcoin too. I mean, Bitcoin... Went down to uh, weekly momentum and held the top of the club. Yeah. So now, if it gets beat back, now you got to be careful with the gold. Because if that's why the gold did rally today, which is a possibility, because, you know, it, there's nothing that's not leaked. And there's another Bloomberg article about the problem. You know, my spike of a Christian regard is appointed as an ex if. This one's if, and this was from a couple hours ago. Well, wow. this is going to put the Swiss in a very tough situation, by the way. So, so I was going back to your your uh, your bean trade, Ira. Yeah, I still want to buy the. Uh, you know, I can see why you're buying it here. I, I want to yeah. see. I want to buy the nose at the July uh, at the July level. Yeah, what what is it, what eight seventy five eight eighty eight eight eighty eight. Yeah. Start looking at the at the at the noves at eight eighty eight down is where I like to where I want to buy them. That's why I wrote the other night that I just wanted to back off and 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 see how this uh, this next uh, expiration played out next Friday. Yeah. Now I want to see if the the noves pick up the July levels and then you get better trade location. So that's why I've been holding off. Okay. Peter Bookbar just put out a piece and says it's 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 uh Lagarde. So I'm gonna wait I'm gonna wait for the German response. It may be Lagarde, but wow, I'm gonna have to do a lot of work here to to reassess everything because this is wow. Wow. That means you're gonna wind up with a German as a head of the uh in the ECB, in the EC presidency, is that the trade-off Merkel made? Because if this was Merkel's compromise, she's more daft at this point than I ever thought. This is, I, I'm, you know, I, you can go back and read 10 years of my blog. This is a terrible choice. This is a terrible choice. This is way too political for the EC. It's been enough with Draghi. They do not need six more years of this. Ira, Dow Jones is uh, at 106 is reporting that German defense minister nominated to lead the European Commission. I saw that, yeah. Oh, they, oh that's what? Uh, hi, uh, um, 
Mas, Heiko Mas? Uh, the EU, le EU leaders reach agreement to top European, but they're not saying who. Okay. Uh. Um, Christine Lagarde nominated. Uh, German defense minister for European Commission. Lagarde is currently management. Christine Lagarde, not, I mean, just keep saying nominated, nominated, but that doesn't say confirmed. Va von der Leyen is what Lars said here. Yeah, uh, Ursula von von. Oh, uh, Ursula von der Leyen. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, Heiko Maas is a foreign minister. Uh, wow. Uh, a defense minister, huh? Yeah. He probably probably needs it with all the warring parties. <laughs> she's she's a lightweight. In it. I, I'm not. Believe me. Go ahead. Tell me. Yeah, she's gone to uh, Ukraine. You know, she's been involved in a few things, but. Another compromise. So they got a German. Uh, what about uh, Charles uh, or Michael? Who? Charles uh, Mickel, Michael, M I C H E L. Oh, Charles or Michelle Barnier? This is Charles. Uh, Charles Michael has been. I don't know who that is. I don't, I don't know who that is. EU Council President. Yeah, here, Lars said she ruined the Bundeswehr. And uh, well, kick the can down the road further. Yeah. Lars is German. Oh, well, there you yeah. go. He loves her. So Lagarde will temporarily relinquish responsibilities as IMF managing director during this ECB nomination period. Huh. Okay. Now, see, this isn't guaranteed because if it was, she'd be done now. Right. That's the way I'm reading it. Yeah, I, that's a good that's a good catch. I, I think that's right. So they've thrown this out there. Now they're going to wait to see what responds. I, I if Germany willingly accepts this, I'll be uh, I'll be amazed. I, I will be amazed. I, this is a, this is a disastrous pick. You know, because sometimes you have to compromise and bend so much that you that you're at the point of breaking, and this is this is just not good, and especially with Trump on you know pointing now at Europe again. I just don't see it. I don't see it. If the ECB wasn't around, I'd be buying the German Bund and selling everything. But I can't, but you can't make the play because there's just too much intervention. But that's what I would be doing in Europe. I mean, Ira, if if you're going to buy bonds, yep. I would think that your your premise would be based upon declining inflation and economic growth as a means to generate capital gains in the bonds. Yeah, but you're already there. I mean, I, but I agree with you. But tell me what you're already at severe negative interest rates. What, what, tell me what the interest. Tell me what the real yield is in Germany. The real yield, not the nominal yield. Tell me what the real yield is. Uh, I, it's got to be severely negative, right? Below, uh, below, yeah. below negative, well, negative, maybe, maybe approaching negative 2%. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Especially on the shorter end, uh, in France, negative two. So you're already at severe negative, negative real yields. Where do you think you're going here? Well, I heard uh, somebody on uh, Bloomberg that this morning they had a guest on and said our rates if they're if you buy our bonds and hedge them and you know hedge the the FX if you're a foreign buyer negative. Oh, uh, let me think about I'm that. I'm not sure if that's true. What, I haven't done the our yields? Yeah, our yields. That's probably about right. Uh, well, you know what 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 inflation number are you? If you're using was, piece, yeah, yeah. at least they're new. At least they're zero. Okay, zero. So you're you're a break even. In Europe, you're getting killed, and they keep going up every day. So there, we know that there's no market. The market is uh, is fraught with um, with deception. That's all that is. It's fraught with deception. I I just don't. I I can't see this. I so I when I see an official German response, because somebody's got to be asking the question. So. I'm going to go with this, but wow, I, this really, I am really caught off guard here. That's, 
and no pun intended. I'm not caught off the guard. I'm just this. This to me is preposterous. Um, as only the Europeans can find a way in, to find a, a way to make peace. But that means that they're really going to jump on trying to create fiscal harmonization. So I don't know what the buy-off is for the Germans. That's 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 the critical question everybody has to ask. What's the buy-off for the Germans? That's a really good question. Who would who would uh, uh, who would Merkel have wanted originally be, be, before before it would have been Lagarde? Before I'm sure Macron wanted, had. Go ahead. I'm she sorry. wanted Viedman because Viedman, you know, was an economic minister or, or served with her, and she trusts Viedman, but she knows that he's a hard money person, and that makes him less palatable to a big part of Europe. But if you, uh, I think that she had learned her lesson with what went on with Axel Weber. Um, but, you know, she's, in a, she's a severely weakened leader, although she knows how to say no to certain things. You know, because Macron tried to steamroll her on fiscal harmonization and uh, uh, a unified uh, banking insurance program before they cleaned up the, the bad debts in Europe. And uh, Macron was pushing hard for it. And Merkel said no to both. So they didn't happen. And Macron was very pissed about it, just for the record. Well, th then I'm, then I'm going to guess that, that Macron had, had is pushing Lagarde as a, as a, a consolation yeah, prize. I have no question. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think that's absolutely right. Are you know what I'm waiting for? Uh, the Messiah? I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. No, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, I'm waiting for Godot. I'm waiting for Godot. No. Um, I'm, I'm waiting for Brussels to levy a fine against Italy. That's what I'm waiting yeah. for. Won't because happen. that is going to be comical. Yep. Yeah, yeah. More than comical. <laughs> that may yeah. be part of the compromise. No, that there'll be none. So it's a good question. All right, I'm jumping off. This really is a, it's, this is worth a very long discussion, um, but we'll, we'll get more into it. Again, look for look for the German response. Um, as somebody, I can't even I can't even make the joke. It's in such bad taste, but I, I'm gonna leave it alone. But you might want to get long diesel fuel. Well, look. Oh, I think I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got it. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I know. Don't know. It's made of that. That's a... <laughs> it's too it's too off color. I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh, no, that's good. That was funnier than what do you want? That was, that was great. That was hilarious. <laughs> Some, somebody sent somebody sent me that question because I've had that joke on my uh, <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, thank sorry. you, sorry. Ira. Sorry. All, right. All right. Okay. I'll I'll hear from you. Always. Thank okay. you. Hey, wait. Wow.